Hey, my loves. And I'm speaking to Warren and Clara and Wyatt, if he is watching this. Um, when I always say that, I just want you guys to know, um, you know, I know there are other people who are watching these videos and um, following this and um, hopefully inspiring you. That's my goal and my intention. Um, oh, I like how they um, went to show they have a, our neighbors, and then I'll get back to what I was saying, but our neighbors have a screened in porch, which is really cool. We might do something very similar to that. Um, but anyways, I, I know there were others who were watching this, watching the videos, and perfectly you were being inspired by this. Um, I, I know that my story, Warren and Clara's story, are not the first. Um, this is happening to tens of thousands of other mothers, as well as probably hundreds of thousands of children um, all across our nation and even the country. Um, which is pretty surreal to think that there are children probably in your kids, if you're a parent, there are probably kids in your children's classrooms who are going through this, um, who have been removed from their mom's life, um, not for any other reason other than the truth. Um, and I believe it's just gonna, unfortunately, the world that we live in, that it's gonna just keep getting worse and worse. Um, perfectly, I am wrong, and perfectly it gets better, but until I think that Jesus returns, I have a hard time thinking that it's gonna get better. It's probably gonna get more intense. So, that being said, um, Warren and Clara, if you guys are watching this, you are most likely not the only ki kids in your school. Now, because you're in a small town, a Moses like Washington, there's a chance that it's more like there's other kids in your school, especially for that town. There's probably kids in your classroom. Um, those kids are going to be the quiet probably ones. Maybe they're the ones who um, get in trouble more frequently. Maybe they're the ones who are mean to other kids. Um, only because hurt people hurt people. So we tend to lash out when we are hurting, which I'm not saying that you guys are because I have no idea. I don't know. I haven't spoken to you. But if I was taken away from my mom, um, especially my mom who raised me and loved me and cared for me and prayed for me and was a very important part of my life, which my mother was, if for some reason in one moment, one day, I never saw her and years went by without being able to speak to her or see her, I think I would be pretty hurt unless I trusted the Lord. And I am praying that I laid enough of a foundation of Jesus Christ, of God's love, his redemption, and his promises within you guys, that you guys are holding on to that. But I can say myself, who at 46 years old, almost 47, tomorrow will be 47 years old, um, I, um, hi, it's a little doggy. <laughs> hi, hi, you're okay. No. You no. want some love. There you go. Come here. <laughs> you want some love. Um, is, um, that over 47 years and super rock solid in my faith. I have been very hurt, and I have done and said hurtful things to other people, especially those who I love, because I am so hurt. So, it would make sense um, that if, if that's the case for me, then that could be the case for you guys. Um, because again, hurt people hurt people. 
it's not intentional. It's just unfortunately the way that we are wired and we sometimes lash out and unfortunately we end up hurting those who are closest to us. Um, when we're hurt, we end up hurting those people who we can trust in a strange way. I don't, I don't know the psychology behind it, but I do know that it is very much a case where um, those who are hurting hurt people. So if we go back to the school and the classroom and the hundreds of thousands of children who have been removed from their mother who loves them, who cares about them, who is doing everything that they can for their kids, then those are the kids most likely are the ones who are being bullied. Those are the kids who are maybe hurting other kids by saying things, being a bully. Maybe they're even a bully themselves. Um, it could be the kids who are rejected more, the ones who are displaced, the kids who are quiet and maybe don't have a lot of friends. Um, but I can guarantee that there are other kids, especially knowing Moses Lake and what comes out of Moses Lake, my guess is there are kids definitely in your school, if not in your classroom, that if you were to speak to them, they're probably also going through the same thing. So, in fact, I know one of my friends who lives there, I'm not gonna mention any names, but she told me that all of a sudden, in fact, yeah, I'm not gonna, yeah, I'll end up giving it away of who this woman is, but she told me that one of her friends, all of a sudden, or someone she knew, it was a wife of someone she knew, went crazy and delusional and posted all these crazy things about her husband and they were all lies and all these things. And so I look at that and just go, were they? Do we know that they really were? Or maybe that kind of stuff is happening in Moses like Washington. Maybe those accusations were truth because it's very rare that somebody makes a, especially these kind of accusations that she was telling me about, it's very rare that someone's gonna make those accusations if they weren't true, especially if they didn't have evidence to uphold it because there's such thing as slander and defamation. And so again, just to kind of get back to it is that I am not the only one, Warren and Clara, you are not the only ones. And once you start talking to people, you start realizing this is happening more often. But let me remind you, you guys are awesome. You guys are amazing. You guys have Jesus Christ in you. You have the Holy Spirit in you. You can do everything and anything that the Lord guides you to do. You are, of course, within the law, within the law of God. The Bible and what he says where God guides he provides that's always been my motto and I want to remind you that as a child of God you are the head you are not the tail that means you lead your situation you lead your um, yeah your situation whatever it is that you're dealing with you're in a place of position where you have already won in fact because Jesus already won for you and you are in him, he is in you according to the word of God, everything is under your feet. It may not appear like that because there's such thing as deception. Um, there may be people around you making you think that you're defeated or you're lost or that things aren't really real or they're not true or that people are delusional or that people are lying they will try and create a narrative over your life that fits their narrative and unfortunately that hurts and it really hurts when they're people who that you love and you care about and you're like yeah but you're supposed to take care of me you're supposed to be telling me these good things so it's really hard because we think that we're supposed to believe them whereas God's saying not everything is real. Not everything is true. And I'm not speaking delusionally. I'm talking about truth. 
um, the, the person who knows all things and is above all things, right, is God, is Jesus, is the Holy Spirit. He's operating in us. So we can pray and we can ask the Lord, you know, is what I am hearing true? And if there's anything within you that feels like it's off, then that's a reason to just seek the Lord. Because maybe it's off for a reason. Maybe it's because it's not the truth. And there is a dimension being built around you to make you believe that it is, but it's not. So, where am I going with this? Um, not really sure. <laughs> I'll be honest, not really sure. Except that I can tell you that I love you and I miss you. And I know that you guys aren't the only ones. I'm not the only one. Um, what does that mean? Well, that means that God's in this. This means that this is so much bigger than you. This is so much bigger than me. And God is, he has to do something. You are warning Clara and even Wyatt, you, are, you guys are God's children before you're mine. He created you. He put life in you guys. He has more ownership in you guys and your final destiny and your purpose and your will in life that he already placed in you from the beginning of time. He has more of a reasoning. He has more of a, um, what word am I looking for? Um, he has more of an interest in making sure that you fulfill your destiny, that you fulfill what he designed and created you for, for such a time as this. So that being said, that takes off a huge weight off of me as your mother. It takes off a huge weight as you guys as well. All, especially at your age, you guys are kids. This is not up to you. Your battle, your um, life situations, no matter what they are, it's God's. Ultimately, if you are under 18 years old or over 18 years old, we can pray and we can ask God, how would you use me today? And then we just deal with that day. We don't deal with tomorrow. We don't deal with next week or even 10 years from now. We just say, God, how would you use me today? And he will do that. And he will show that to us and just constantly trusting him in it knowing that he will do what he needs to do to bring about his good and perfect plan and his will over your guys's life over my life and uh and i just believe it i believe it more and more he gave me hebrews um chapter three it was this morning and um i was talking about the israelites and how the israelites um they really dealt with a lot of unbelief, which was truly hard hardness of them. They were hard hearted. They were so bitter and resentful that they didn't believe that God would do what he said he would do. And it was through the doubt and the unbelief, which was really a hard heart that kept them in um, the desert for 40 years. In fact, nobody left the desert unless they were not born in um so like anyone born in the desert they're the ones who entered the promised land but everyone who came out of egypt they didn't enter the promised land because if they would have they would have entered the promised land bringing everything and who they were back in egypt in captivity in the new land that god was bringing them into and God couldn't allow that. He couldn't allow the mindset of being, the mindset of depravity, the mindset of um, of not being overcomer, a mindset of being captive. He couldn't allow that in the promised land. And so they had to all die. The only ones who went to the promised land um, were those who, um, Moses didn't even go in there. Um, were those who trusted God and those who were born in the desert because it, it couldn't he couldn't take them from captivity in Egypt to the promised land and just create basically what they had been doing in captivity in Egypt 
and then recreate that in the promised land. God's like, no, I got to get you out of that mindset. You guys are overcomers. You are above all things. Um, the enemy is underneath you. The enemy is defeated. You can't bring that mindset that you are captive into the new land. And um, that was such a promise to me that God had given me a long time ago. And I knew I do not want to be in the desert for 40 years. I don't want to be away from my kids for 40 years because of doubt and unbelief. I'm going to believe and claim that God said he will do what he said he'll do. And I changed and I shifted my mindset to be so strong in the Lord. So, so believing that God will do what he said he will do. And what the Lord told me this morning was, you have to trust me, Beth. Trust me. Under all circumstances, trust me. Um, and I, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to trust Jesus. He paid it all. He did it for me. He doesn't have to come back here and do it all again. He's going to come back and he's going to take a spotless bride home with him. But nobody has to um, make him die again for us. He did it. We have to claim it. We have to walk in it. So that way when we enter the promised land, we are acting as Jesus did. We're not bringing our depravity and our mindset of when we were in captivity into the new promised land so i was glad that the lord showed me that this morning especially as we are in texas with a new home new land physically and it was a reminder of like god said he will do what he said he's gonna do and i need to believe it and i'm gonna believe it i know that he will that he will it's his timing i'm gonna trust him i know it's gonna happen now it's gonna happen on this earth it's not going to happen in heaven it will happen on this earth and i'm going to claim that to be true so i love you guys i miss you i miss you guys so much so much um again i i could be bitter and resentful and angry it's not going to do any good right i'm not going to become hard-hearted i will not live in the desert for another 40 years i'm going to trust god I'm going to trust him, and I'm going to celebrate your homecoming now. Um, if there's such a thing, I don't know how to do that other than just trusting God, trusting him. I love you guys. I miss you. Father God, I just ask that you bless the warning, Clara. Lord, I ask that you show them the promised land. Lord, I ask that you also reveal to them the hope of glory. Um... I just thank you, Father, for trusting me and trusting Warren and Clara and trusting Wyatt and trusting um, trusting my family with this situation. That it just feels so surreal and not real, but yet you, God, you are real. Jesus, Yeshua, you are real. Holy Spirit, you are real. Thank you for showing yourself to me and to my kids, all three of them, Wyatt, Warren, and Clara. Father, I thank you. I ask that you bless Warren and Clara and you shine your favor of the Lord upon them. In your name, amen. I love you guys. I miss you guys so much. I will, um, it's beautiful out here. It's so beautiful out here. I love you. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, God bless you. All right, I love you. Bye.